Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, July 24th, 2022. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast, Vintage Around Length, episode number 657. And sadly, Damon's on assignment right now, uh, but he'll be back next week, I believe. I don't remember. I believe so. Yes. But with us, we have uh, World Pet 2021. AJ, aka Pup Zero Zio. How's it going? Yay! 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 Welcome back. Welcome Thank you. back. It's and been a long last time. time. You were not World Pet. Now you are. I, last time I was not World Pet. It was a uh, um, a lot of gaming happening. I remember the last time I was on. But um. Uh, Yes. Hang on. Let me go back because I believe it was episode four seventy eight. Is that right? Uh, Ltas discrete slash dl. We were no, discussing. I, I, I think I think he was on one of our uh, uh, fun games, Birth- birthday bashes. Birthday bash. He was. And yeah. we were gaming. Mm-hmm. We were playing games. And then before that, then I believe. Yes, well, amongst the other things. Oh, before I forget, um, I have not forgotten. AJ won the naughty list in the Jingle Mingle twice last December. Uh, that was probably the last time we were officially like yeah. involved in some capacity. But as a guest on a topic, it's been quite a while. So welcome back. Yes, thank you. We appreciate it. Um, so there's this little event coming up later this year in September that... I was like, hey, let's have let's have a guest on and have a little discussion. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what World Bear Weekend is. We're going to talk about you and your title, uh, what that means, and some of the things that are going to be coming up for that, amongst other cool. stuff. So uh, if you could kind of catch us up a little bit. For the general audience listening or, and or watching uh, in the bear community, we've talked in the past about these things called bear runs. Um, no one's necessarily running. It's not that kind of an event. Um, it's not a you marathon. Have a t-shirt about it. Yeah, we do. We have a T-shirt about it. Um, and I almost wore it for this, and then I decided maybe not. Uh, <laughs> thanks to Ray Smith, uh, former Morsister North American Bear, for coining the definition on it. But um, hey, James, Glitter Bears in the house in the live chat. Hey. Um, part of the World Bear uh, family. So. Yeah, basically, now that the, you know, Miss Rona is kind of making a very slow exit, (laughs) uh, the events are coming back. So, uh, Damon and I are planning to go this September to World Bear Weekend, which will be hosted in Orlando, Florida. Uh, Drew is actually going to be going as well. So, we're probably going to have an OTR, an on-the-road show of some type for Cubs Out Loud while we're down there. But... Today, we wanted to talk about um, the event that's going to be coming up and about uh, what your experience and your journey has been. Um, Before we get into the title stuff, just so folks are aware, the dates are September 22nd through the 25th. um, And a number of folks are extending their stay to go do some things in Orlando because they have these things called amusement parks. They're very popular. Um, there's Walt Disney World, which has several properties, and then there's uh, Universal Studios, um, and then also some other great things around the area to be able to see. So, and um, tickets are still available, correct, for people who are interested? Absolutely. Tickets are still available. Right now, there's the basic package, the basic weekend pass- package is $129, uh, standard package is $159, and the VIP experience is $229. 
Um, there will be a price increase uh, as of August 1st. Um, it'll be a $20 increase on all weekend passes. Um, if you do want to volunteer, there is a, a pass for $79 uh, plus fees. And uh, essentially it's, it's a reduced pass, but you still get to experience the whole weekend when you're not working. Um, we also do have day and night pass pricing as well, um, in case if you can't come the entire weekend. So Thursday um, from 12 p.m. to 3 a.m. it's $50. Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 a.m. it's 80. Saturday it's from 9 a.m. to 3 a.m. is 100. And then any pass for any night, uh, the nightly pass after 7 p.m. is $40 each pass. Also want to mention, we have a really fun uh, Sunday drag brunch, um, which is a separate cost. It is $35, but you'll get some great food and some amazing entertainment from uh, local uh, drag queens. So um, if you are interested, um, I was able to talk to Adam, our producer, um, and the, we do have a promo code for COL listeners. It is Ooh. COL 2022, just the year. Um, it will give you $25 off a of standard or uh, VIP passes. Um, and it will, um, the code will expire at the, on um, 11.59 PM on the 31st of August. So again, that promo code is COL 2022. Oh. Well, thanks, um, Adam. I'm sure that our listeners uh, and other folks who haven't gotten their tickets and stuff and are thinking about going, they very much appreciate a little discount. That yes, they can apply. It, it is a lot of fun. Um, we we are very uh, heavy on education. Um, this past year, we now have uh, an education coordinator who has kind of rounded up all of the workshops. And um, all of those workshops can be either listed on our web, they're listed on our website, or um, like many bear runs, uh, we use a program for mobile devices called YAPP. It's Y-A-P-P. Um, it is good for Android devices. It is good for iOS devices. Um, and there you can actually create your customized schedule on there. Um, you can, uh, talk to people who are in the, who have joined the app. You're able to see, uh, again, the full schedule, all the workshop schedules, the bios for the judges, the bios for the uh, producers. Um, there is also, uh, what else? Uh, you can, again, you can uh, customize your own schedule. So if you do go to download the YAP app from the, iOS or the Android store, the code, the the uh, group code is World Bear, all one word. Cool. So. Uh, I also want to recognize that uh, a certain guest who is out on assignment is in the live chat, apparently, while they're on the road. Oh, boy. <laughs> Ready. I hope they're not driving. Oh, wait, no, he didn't drive. No, 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 I was no. David, David doesn't drive heads. He could be on and probably interacting with us. Um, but yeah, so uh, two codes for folks to know. World Bear Weekend, if you're going to get a ticket or a pass, um, remember that they all do increase on August 1st by $20, but you can save $25 on a standard or a VIP level. And that uh, code is going to be redeemable through 11.59 p.m., a.k.a. right before midnight at the end of August on August 31st. Um, and you'll want to put in COL2022 as your promo code to get the $25 off. And then on the YAP app, which um, I think most people might be familiar with if they've gone to bear runs prior to the pandemic, um, leather runs, bear runs, um, mm -hmm. probably puppy events, those kind of things. It's pretty cool. It's a way to basically create a, a little social media kind of feed of people posting things, uh, possibly sharing pictures. But more importantly, like AJ said, um, those schedules can be in there. And the newer thing before the pandemic I love was this whole you can make your own schedule. So you can favorite different items and then you have a schedule tab that you can click and then it's just showing the stuff that you are planning to attend so you're not kind of scrolling and scrolling and looking through multiple days and like i can't remember what i picked that kind of stuff um so yeah lots of great information and that one in order to get uh when you go to the yap 
uh, app, you need to have a code to be able to pull up mm-hmm. that information for the event. And it's World Bear, all one word. W-O-R-L-D-B-E-A-R. Yes. And there's also maps um, with for the uh, hotel in there as well. So um, this is, um, since World Bear does travel to different locations each year, um, it's a new new spaces to explore. So there are definitely hotel. There are maps in there, so you can kind of navigate around the hotel. Nice. And I'm going to add a lot of this information that we're going over is going to be on our blog in the doc, including links. Um, I just added in the Yap app link um, to the website, and then you should be able to go from there to your platform of choice to look up that stuff. And uh, in the live chat, we also have a certain someone that goes by the title Zach. Mr. Mm. World Bear 2021. <laughs> that is him. Yes. I think I'm familiar with him and James. I might be. I wonder why. Maybe. <laughs> wonder Possibly. Why. Possibly we spend a lot of time together over the past year. I- I'm not sure if we might have pictures on the overlay uh, of them. Uh, I believe so. Actually, yeah, in the overlay to AJ's. Well, if you're looking at the, at this as a live feed or the video after the fact, it is to the left of AJ, which would be AJ's right. Um, there is a beautiful shot, I think, done by Entendre Photography, um, which is made up of, um, uh, why did his name go ahead? Dane and Chester, both who have been on the podcast before. Chester is our previous co-host. Um, it's a gorgeous photo of the three of you standing side by side with your patches, I think, after you mm. were given your titles uh, last year. And then there's a, a lovely black and white kind of fun photo of the three of you all facing a wall with your hands strategically placed. Uh, so, yeah. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of good memories from this past year. So, yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. Um, why don't we discuss titles and how uh, you kind of have, uh, for lack of a reference, we can maybe talk about what a title family is um, and, like, explain that for, for folks. So this year, for 2022 coming up in September, there is going to be uh, potentially the following titles given away. Mr. World Bear, Ms. World Bear, World Cub, world pet and then there is also uh, a newer item called the spirit of the bear award um and i believe there's a deadline on those there is so applications for actually for the first four the world bear uh, mr world bear ms world bear world cub and world pet all applications are due by august 15th no exceptions because adam and the team needs to get their stuff done to make to make sure the contest happens uh, the Spirit of the Bear Award actually is something that is voted, voted upon the people who are running for that year. It is uh, someone who exemplifies the spirit of the bear. Um, so th- it was based on um, a person by the name of, of Jason Hall. And he had run for IML. He was in the leather community. He was also uh, a, a pup, um, part, of the, part of the pet community. And unfortunately, a few years ago, uh, he passed away. And as a way to memorialize him and what he stood for and um, his passion, uh, Mason and Adam and Paul created the Spirit of the Bear Award. So it's voted upon. The, the judges do not vote on it. Um, they, they, the contestants really kind of on, on Saturday, right before uh, they go on for their... Uh, final speeches, um, they vote on who they feel would exemplify those characteristics, and then um, it is announced wh- right before the uh, titles are announced. And this past year, uh, I'm so happy to say that James won the Spirit of the Bear Award as well as World Cup. So hey. he, has a, he has a special patch on his vest that says Spirit of the Bear Award. Nice. James said in the live chat that um, Jason Hall was the Mr. Philadelphia Leather of 2015. Yes. So, nice. <laughs> he also says, oh, we maybe have seen each other around a few places. A few places. <laughs> around around a, few, a few dark dark corners. Oh, oh imagine that. 
Never heard of such a thing. <laughs> no. Not especially not at their events or any event. But it is a uh, um the you know as as you know people on the on, on online may notice the there are only three of us um from the twenty twenty one year. Um so with that being said, uh you know, 2020, 2021, um, still a rough time during COVID. Um, however, we were able to have the event in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, and we were, uh, unfortunately, that year, uh, we did not have anyone run for Ms. World there. So um, we're hoping, you know, this, this coming year, I know the applications are still open. Um, people have been applying. Um, and hoping to have a full family the next year. Okay. Yes. Nice. So, uh, with that being said, there were three of you that were given a title last year. Um, and I don't know if people know this necessarily. Um, this may be more, I kind of think, in the, the leather community, or maybe it has its roots in the leather community, that people who are sashed, um, slash vested, slash patched, slash titled... Mm -hmm as a, at an event or at a group are kind of considered a title family, um, a group of individuals that share kind of that experience together um, of that time. That is correct. The title family, of course, are the people who, who, who won the title. So Zach and James and I will forever be bonded, whether we like it or not, um, <laughs> because we all won. <laughs> um, however, you know, with our class, um, within our year, uh, James and Zach ran um, unopposed uh, because we had a very small amount of people who actually ran. And then for their, for the pet title, um, there were four of us who ran. So we are all, you know, I still keep in contact with, with everyone who was in the, uh, the pet category as well. So it's, you know, great. Um, happy to see them. I do see them out, out and about at events and um, you know, i have plans to work with some of them again in the future. So it's a, it's a great camaraderie. I think, especially with, uh, with any event, with any, um, with any type of experience like that, not only just an actual run like that or a contest, but during COVID. So there are certain nuances that people before People who ran um, and got the title before you and people after may not have those unique experiences. And um, we have been, the, the three of us have been pretty much inseparable at events with the exception of a few. Um, so we have been able to title or uh, travel as a title family um, to most events over, over the past year. And it, it's been a great thing to have that support with you and, you know, where... One person may not be strong. The other person is strong at. So we, we were there to support each other. Right. So um, James said something important in the chat for clarification for himself and for Zach, even though they were the only people that were um, competing, there was a requirement that they had to achieve at least a score of 80% or more of the points for their particular category in order to actually be the recipient. So in theory, just because you're the only contestant, you may not necessarily be given the title if you don't meet the measurement, so to speak, of, of the judges, what they're looking for. That is absolutely correct. And it's actually harder for people who run unopposed than for people to run um, opposed. And they were able to both, you know, former title holders before that, they were both able to knock it out of the water. Right. Um, speaking of that, so uh, for folks who may not be aware, and there might be some uh, confusion, slightly understandably, the, 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 the person... The force to be reckoned with that puts on World Bear Weekend, um, <laughs> Mr. Adam uh, Rodriguez Brout, he also uh, has been involved in North American Bear since, uh, I think almost since its inception or for a very long time. So people yes. might think that NAB, as we call it, and WBW are kind of the same thing, but in a way not. Um, mm -hmm. NAB does have its own title competition kind of system, but the reason I bring it up is, uh, as you had said, uh, having been former title holders, I think you were referencing that they have gotten titles 
prior to their own competing last year at World Bear Weekend. And I think that is a requirement for the application process, right? That is a re- yes. Currently, that is a requirement for World uh, Mr. World Bear and uh, World Cup. Okay. For uh, Ms. World Bear and for World Pet, it is not a requirement. So for, uh, I will speak for myself, I did not have a previous title before running for this event. Um, I have been active in the bear and leather community for quite a while now, since a young age, younger age. So um, I felt, you know, for me, when I wanted to run, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I have had many people around me now and even at that time who were title holders or who, who had ran for titles. So I felt it was my time. Hey, let's try this out. Let's see how it goes. If, you know, if I win, that's great. If not, that's fine. And I won. So there's, there's that. And it has been a, quite, a, quite a, an experience over the past year, um, being able to meet people and being able to experience all these different events with the travel. So let's talk about that. The the mm-hmm. past year, um, if I recall correctly, you are the first ever world pet title holder. I am. So no pressure at all to set a good precedence for, you know, what the title will be moving forward. Well, I mean, I, a little pressure. I mean, from my <laughs> understanding, there's always a little pressure, but if you relax into it, yeah, it'll be, it'll be fine. Oh yeah. And, and I've, you know, I, I've learned to, to do that because it was uh, a new experience for me. Um, I will say most people who, who know me uh, know that I am not a person to really draw attention to oneself. And I'm usually behind the scenes um, supporting other people. So when this came around, um, it was a lot of attention um, all at once because of that. Um, so, you know, with uh, James and Zach, uh, they have that experience and were able to kind of help guide me with managing that. The literally thousands of friend requests that you receive, um, everyone asking you for, you know, for, for their thoughts or information on certain topics, whether it be, you know, title or, uh, or the pet community. Um, and then the the travel, um, which has been absolutely amazing. It's uh, and then you have to be being a title holder. You have to be on all the time. Um, I don't want to say it is a celebrity status, um, but there are situations where you are the main focus. Uh, for example, we all three of us did a, a jock auction. Um, in at Sash Bash in uh, Iowa City, Iowa, and bars packed full of people, and you're up front and center, shaking your assets for 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 money for a charity or um, you know a local organization. So it's a lot to it can be a lot for some people to have that energy and drive to keep moving. So. That is one thing, like, if for, for people who are interested in running, um, specifically for, you know, World Bear or any other competition, we do, um, you know, that is something that you need to realize that it's, depending on the title that you're running for, um, you need to ensure that you can be ready for some of that attention um, coming at you. And um, we're actually going to be hosting... Um, virtual mock interviews, the the current World, World Bear family, on Thursday, August 4th from 7 to 9. So that is going to try to help, um, try to help some people who are interested in either running for World Bear or another competition, um, what to expect, um, at least during the interview portion of the contest. Ooh, okay. And is that uh, specific to a platform that you're using for the virtual mock interview event? So right now we are going to be using Zoom. Um, however, um, I haven't posted the Zoom link yet. I can um, I can share the Facebook link for the event uh, with you, Gary. Okay. I 
in our document, it'll go on to the blog. I already have the, the Facebook um, link for the event. Uh, okay. But that was why I was asking. I wasn't sure if you were using the Facebook video type group platform thing or if you were going somewhere else. No, we're, um, we find it easier to use Zoom um, because we're able to have a little bit more control. Not so much, you know, people who are for the people who are attending, but there have been Zoom bombers and uh, or uh, Facebook bombers and other chats that I've been in. So it's a way to kind of um, ensure that we can have an o open dialogue with everyone without having to worry about that. Okay. Good deal. Um, I think that's a really interesting idea, doing a mock interview type event. I've known of contestants in different circles that have done practice kind of mock uh, interview items as preparation. It's To me, it's akin or similar to like a job interview. Um, not the same thing, obviously not the same questions. Um, but the, the idea is to help prep you so that you can Correct. think about how you want to answer certain things. Um, some, I imagine some questions are pretty standard um, in terms mm -hmm. of like, what do you expect to do with this title? Um, what is your background? You know, what are you passionate about? Um, but each contest can have its own uh, surprise element or unknown element, I guess is the better way to phrase it. I know at NAB, um, this will be the first WBW I've been to, but at NAB, there usually seems to be like a, a bowl bucket or hat. Mm -hmm question and answer round and you have no idea what that thing will be <laughs> that you get mm -hmm. asked um so you know we always kind of make jokes about the whole like miss you know uh world pageant you know miss america miss universe kind of thing where they're just like world peace um but you know the the reality is is that it's it's very live and it can be very intense um but i think the preparation is a huge piece of knowing and having confidence like you know about how you can to handle that stuff so it's funny it's funny you say that too because um even before when i think jeff may have mentioned about bears actually you know potentially running around well most people do not people who are in the contest are literally um moving the entire time that they're there it's not necessarily uh a fun i don't say it, it could be fun but it's not necessarily uh you know, relaxing time uh, because you have a schedule and you have to be there. You're either going to be on stage, you're going to be selling raffle tickets. Um, and I, I'm just for everyone, I'm speaking specifically for World Bear. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there is, uh, you have to sell raffle tickets uh, three nights. You need to be on stage three nights. You need to uh, practice your speech. You have interviews on uh, Saturday. Uh, morning and so you have to kind of put this all together and also sleep and eat um, in between <laughs> um, but it's usually you know until midnight the first uh, first couple nights and then um, at least until about nine or ten o'clock on on the Saturday mm -hmm. so it is uh, the these people who run for uh, run for the events are exhausted by the time that they are done on wh whether they win or lose, they've completed an amazing feat um, of keeping up with that all weekend. And again, most people are able to do that. Some people are, are not able to. And, you know, that is reflected in scores that they'll, that, that they'll get from the judges. Right. I mean, I, I think what f some folks may not understand, uh, especially for this kind of an event, this style, I guess I should say, because not all events are similar if they have right. contests, titles, this kind of things. But this really is a bit of a marathon. I, I think it's equivalent and easy to say that the people that put on the event, the work that's done by the contestants in some ways is equivalent um, and just as exhausting. So on Sunday or late Saturday night, do not be surprised if you see people uh, that are pretty tired um yes. you know and <laughs> trying to still function <laughs> and carry forward um you know yeah. and and if you know you go to an event like this and the individual that you're rooting for uh wins great and if they don't please still give them the recognition and the kudos for the effort and the work that was put in do that for all of the contestants because Absolutely. you know they've spent a lot of time effort money you know energy these things to to do this i mean is it possible 
to take this lightly and kind of jump into it and not do a whole lot ahead of time, sure. Uh, results may vary. <laughs> yes, agreed. I mean, and that's and then that's a thing. I mean, you. What I would say is know your audience. So if you're running for a local competition, you may it may be only one day at a bar. Mm -hmm. If you're running for what this is an international level, um, it's going to be a multi day event. Um, you know, it's. Even, even events like IML, it's a multi-day event. It's a much larger pool of people who go to that as of right now. But it's still, you go through all these different uh, hoops to get to the end of the competition. And it is, again, that is also an experience I will have with the, the six of us who ran that year. Mm -hmm. um, we there, you know, there was a mask mandate that was put into effect as we, you know, got onto essentially the after we all arrived on Thursday, Friday there was a mask mandate that went into effect in Memphis. Mm -hmm. So we had to um, navigate that while trying to sell raffle tickets. Um, and you know, if most people who probably have been to an event know that. Typically, when you sell raffle tickets, either in a bar or at an event, you typically will get up close and personal with people to right. sell enough raffle tickets. Because uh, the more raffle tickets you sell, the a I mean, there's more money towards charity. But the person who sells the most raffle tickets will also get uh, a prize mm -hmm. as well. Um, or and then also that money goes to um, it can also go to a travel fund. So you want to sell as much money or sell as much many raffle tickets as you can to you know be a top be 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 a, be a top winner and that for multiple reasons. Right. I was just chuckling when you kind of stopped for a second. It said be a top. I was like, well, anyways. Um, you know. So, well, and, and speaking of getting up close and personal, so one of the things that will probably be something that everyone needs to be aware of, and hopefully um, isn't going to be that much of a impact that's going to change the run for this year. Two episodes ago in COL 655, we just uh, did a discussion on health alerts um, regarding Beyond STIs, where um, I introduced and talked about meningococcal disease and also um, the lovely other virus that's going around right now, um, the monkeypox, which is uh, most of the cases are being reported in the MSM community. So yes. when we go to Florida in uh, about, a, what, a month and a half? We're less than 60 days away, I think, um, or roughly 60 days at this point. So, yeah, it's um, it's something to, to keep in mind. So that'll be another uh, dynamic. And that just goes to show you really don't know what that's going to be like. Correct. As a contestant, it you you might have... If you happen to have any inkling of OCD, I'm just going to say, be prepared to not be prepared because something may come up and kind of shift things or, or pose, a, pose a challenge. That's all. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. You know, if, if, peop, if the peop, attendees, you know, and I'd recommend this for any bear event, World, I guess World Bear is the, probably the, the first one that's coming up, that, coming to mind. But um, if you are able to get the... Um, meningitis shot um, or vaccine um, that is I would say definitely recommended um, I would I was thankfully able to get it before I went down to Tuttle Wave uh, back in May um, and then I know some areas are allowing uh, people to get the monkeypox vaccine as well so no I mean the best thing to do is to, to talk to your medical provider um, and and fi figure out what the best uh choices are for you and your health hmm. yeah um <laughs> james said uh, bring your hand sanitizer um yeah so that's a whole element thing in mm -hmm. and of itself um and i still think if i read correctly on the website there is a requirement for attendance with a 72 hour prior uh negative covid test Yes. Um, if you are not COVID vaccinated, um, you do need a 72-hour test prior to coming on site. 
um, and you just bring that with you, and they will check it in, check you in at registration. Um, you are able to bring a copy if you don't have your uh, Vax card in a physical form. You can have it on your phone, either taking a photo of it, or and a lot of states have apps that you're able to show your vaccination status. Okay, that's fair. Um, yeah, I mean, and who knows what. The, the world holds in, you know, the next month and a half, two months to come right. uh, on that front for, for folks. It, it will be interesting, to say the least. Um, so if anyone's interested in terms of these titles and information, you can go to worldbearweekend.com uh, to read up on it. We're obviously going to have a whole bunch of links. Again, as a reminder, the application deadline is August 15th. No exceptions. So get it in. I would say shoot for August 10th. Just just move your whole deadline up, and that way you don't have to worry about it. Don't please mm-hmm. try to cram to the last minute at like 11.30 at night on the 15th, because, yeah. And make sure you read the application, and make sure you answer everything as it's specified. <laughs> hmm, that kind of sounds like a hint, as in be thorough, and just, you know, don't kind of, I don't know, yes. I don't know if I want to say half-ass it, but, you know. <laughs> Uh, just you know, just making sure that you know there you know you do have to write about yourself in some areas in the third person. So make sure you write about yourself in the third person and the areas that you need to. Um, and you know, best of luck for anyone who is uh, who who wants to run or is thinking about running. Um, again, it's a great opportunity. Um, again, for the the pet category, there is no title requirement. Um, you're able to um, come in and run. And, you know, you will be able to go through the process. And if it's for some reason you do not win that year, um, you can always, you know, it, it's an experience nonetheless that I think, you know, everyone should be able to go through at least once. And for, and for the Ms. Bear title, um, I will say this. Uh, you know, the Miz titles, the Mama Bear titles of the community are super important. Um, females in the bear community are absolutely the backbone of the bear community. So um, it is important to support them. It is important to lift them up. So um, if anyone is interested in, and especially since there's so, um, they're, you know, the Ms. and female, female identifying in the uh, bear community are so, in, so few and far between. Mm-hmm. So um, please, if you are interested, please feel free to reach out to anyone um, of this current title or uh, contact you know, World Bear Weekend um, at worldbearweekend.com um, for any questions. And uh, let us get you to, um, we can answer any questions that you have about the contest or the event. Agreed. Very much so. Um, if anything, uh, in our own podcast history, Miss um, Tammy, uh, Lady Daddy, has been very much uh, an educational person who yes. has, you know, helped us understand um, that kind of stuff. In fact, I was just watching um, What's the Safe Word on YouTube, mm-hmm. um, and they were uh, they did a whole series called Ask a Leather Daddy, um, but there was a whole discussion about, like, femme presenting non-binary. There was kind of a, a discussion about that, and I thought that was really good that they were basically saying, you know, like, there's there's all sorts of different things, and while there is a title, there's also, like, a way that you carry yourself or a headspace, that kind of stuff, so... Mm-hmm things to keep in mind with that. Um, Zach says, we love our mama bears and Ms. Bears. Um, <laughs> James says, come through mama bears in the live chat. So um, I do want to go back. So David Sheffield of the live chat asked, any plans for a podcast of the contestants for 2022 once the contestants are confirmed? Hmm. That, that's uh-huh. kind of a question for us, wouldn't it? I, I know, I know. I'm like, I'm, I mean, I'm, we haven't I'm done it out loud because I'm, I'm we pretty sure David might have seen it, but he he also would be a part of that. So we'll have to we'll have to think about that. Yeah, and now <clears> that <throat> now that we're having more events, actually, people going to events and more winners might be returning to because we've done plenty of them before, and well, we're doing one now. So right, somebody needs to I make just... sure that they schedule them. 
<laughs> well, I was just thinking about that. I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm gonna have to check that Yap app to see what the the judges' schedule is, and then I don't know, is the contestant schedule loaded in that? Let me check. It is, that. yes. Um, I mean, so that's a whole other the fact, though. Factor, yeah. It might pose a little bit of a challenge, um, given the fullness of of the expectations. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll consider it and see what we can figure out about that. Um, I uh, want to get back to we were talking a little bit about the past year. So you you dropped something, and I have not necessarily heard of this before. So I would be uh, interested to be enlightened on what a sash bash is. Sure. Uh, Sash Bash is an event in uh, Iowa City, in Iowa. Um, it is kind of like a, a weekend, a weekend event, a uh, charity to raise uh, local money for the the local uh, organization. And I'm sorry, it's it, it escapes me at the moment. I know Zach will probably help fill me in on the live chat for that. Uh, however, um, essentially, it's um, a couple bar nights. They have uh, they have an educational um, kink you that there were there was a pet mosh and there were uh, three or four other events that they had held, and then the last night um, is a bar event that has a, a jock auction, which is pr the primary where a lot of the funds are raised. This past year, we had about. 10 or so people auction jocks off. So it was a pretty fun event. And then afterwards there was, I think, a, no, I'm sorry, the first night there was a drag show. And the second night after the kind of all the formal things is just kind of a big old party. And so it was a great event. Uh, I got to go there with my, uh, with my partners, uh, Zach and Kelly, and uh, were able to spend time with them and then enjoy the weekend. Zach was so. saying in the live chat, the Iowa Safe Schools and Leather Archives and Museum uh, were the charities um, at Papa Bear Present Sash Bash. And I found the the Facebook listing. Um, so this was back in March of this year. Uh, yes. From what I'm seeing. So, yeah, like I, I kind of heard it, but I, was, I wasn't aware that it was a formal event in a specific mm -hmm. place. I was kind of thinking this might be just a general term that's used within different, you know, title mm -hmm circles or whatever and maybe it is um it's just like your experience in particular was that it was a weekend event for, for fundraising so it, weekend event and there there are a lot of title holders there so um the the three current title holders james zach and i went um and then we had were able to uh meet and greet with other you know bear and leather title holders uh black title holders as well and it was a great networking event on top of raising funds for, for charity. Nice. Well, that's pretty cool. So perhaps the new title holders yet to be determined um, could participate next year. I'm sure that uh, your, your title family would be happy to help answer questions and uh, guide them along the way. Which uh, So that's an interesting point. I was just thinking about... Is that something that happens in terms of like the work and the legacy when a person is no longer the current title holder um, to help the future title holders? Like once they're announced, like is that I don't know if it's a formal process, but is it sort of um, an understood thing? I don't think, at least for World Bear, I don't think necessarily it's a formal process. Uh, you know, for for Zach and for for James, you know, they're. Um, since they have former title holders, I know they've been in contact with their uh, with their parents, essentially their title parents, mm -hmm. um, and have been able to receive you know some guidance and on certain situations. That's not always the case, though. Um, some people you know choose to in certain 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 circumstances you know step away from the community, so they're not as involved. Um, I know for the. Uh, since I did not have a, a, world, uh, a, a parent per se, you know, I had the, um, you know, Adam and Mason, who were the executive producers of World Bear, and um, been able to lean on my title brothers, and on top of uh, Nikki, who is the uh, twenty, or, I'm sorry, 2019, 2020 uh, Ms. World Bear. So I've been able to uh, lean on all of them uh, since I don't. 
I don't have a title parent. <laughs> so, but I will have a title child, which is absolutely pet, uh, scares me. Um, in a month and a half. Oh, I'm sure you'll make a good title parent. I don't, I mean, the, the birthing process is probably the easiest part by far, I would think. I don't know. I don't know. It may, it, it may burn a little. <laughs> well, obviously check with your doctor about that. Well. Um, <laughs> it's good. James said in the live chat, it's not formal, but just a lot of support, which I, I think is fair as an expectation. I would hope if someone is uh, awarded or achieves a title that there is not only the people that help them, you mm -hmm. know, practice and prepare and all that kind of stuff, like, you know, helps them going forward in their title year, but anybody who's been in that position before, um, not, not that it's a requirement, but they may, you know, offer a hand or suggestions and, and different things of assistance, you know, kind of like, um, I don't know, like, you know, maybe a checklist of things like do's and don'ts or things to be aware of. Um, Cause I think that kind of happens a lot, especially, what comes to mind is like in terms of the entertainment realm, when someone starts ascending or coming up, you know, through the ranks, uh, others may say to them, okay, keep this aware. If you're going to go to a venue, these are the things you should know about ahead of time. If you're going to get paid for this, um, which isn't necessarily in titles, but in the example I'm giving, you know, it's like, know these things ahead of time, you know, and, and um, to avoid snafus or pitfalls that other people have had, you know, right. with, um, different circumstances in that case. So I think that's yeah. good. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And the, um, you know, it, it's, it's having that support and, you know, be, being there for the, uh, being there for the newly crowned winner and just, you know, like, hey, I'm here, you know, um, my, my goal would be to maybe even attend a couple of events with my title child to, to support them and kind of, you know, be there if they need anything. And if they don't, that's perfectly fine, too. But nice. I'm sure. yeah. And before you know it, you'll have an entire litter. It'll it'll be Zio's family. <laughs> right. did, um, did, did anyone want that in the world? Does anyone want that in the world? That's the question. Well, I mean, and, before before now, uh, most likely, you know, your family was being swallowed. So I mean, you know, this is this is a whole different experience. <laughs> They're actually in front of me now, you know. <laughs> um, but one thing I do want to say um, specifically about the pet family is that while I identify as a pup, um, pets come in all shapes and sizes. Um, you know, I would say in the general um, mainstream, there are kitties, there are ponies. Um, there is, for the first uh, North American bear pet, um, we have a lion. Mm. Uh, there are uh, there is a unicorn title holder uh, for a pet title. Uh, so it is an amazing group of people who are now in the pet community, and the um, the energy of everyone to make this community inclusive and not just say for pets or for kitties. But, you know, pups are typically, um, from, from what I've seen, the more dominant species um, <laughs> in, in the community. But, um, you know, I enjoy meeting other people with other thoughts and different backgrounds and, you know, different species. So David and James are both chiming in on, on the live chat. They said the Cincinnati Critter is a unicorn so i'm guessing the cincinnati critter is an official title um, cincinnati critter yes is, okay. is an official title um she or uh, they were recently crowned i think uh late spring early summer okay um and that is uh they hold uh two different competitions they have the the cincinnati critter competition and then they have the cincinnati leather week which is coming up in the middle of august that the world family will be there at. Oh, nice. Very good. I'm not sure. I think Ryan might be saying in the chat that they have a question. It's hard to see with my older eyes yeah, these it little emoticons. Like it's, 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 it's a raised hand. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know if it's like, hey, I have a question or like, you know, whoop, whoop, you know, like they're celebrating, mm -hmm. showing my old age <clears throat> as if my white and my goatee beard doesn't give it away. Uh, 
so that being said, yeah, I see that face you're making, Zio. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so tell us about like what this year has been since you're the first uh, title holder of this. Mm-hmm. You are you are blazing a trail in several ways. One, you're the first of this title. Two, you came uniquely to this that you didn't have titles before. Um, that is not to say that you weren't aware of it. Uh, you right. have come from different families of individuals who have either been adjacent to title winning or were title winners. So yes. it's not something that came out of the blue that you were unaware of um, in that case, you know. No, and, and you're, you're, you're right. By, um, you know, I had, I had been um, around the community for quite a while. I've, I attended NAB with with you and with Damon before in the past. Um, and I, you know, at one point I was part of, a, um, I was in a DS relationship where uh, my sir was a former, or was a formal title holder. And so I was around that for, for quite a while and we would go to contests and, um, you know, at some points he may judge or we may just be in attendance for support. Um, and then, you know, COVID happened. Um, and so everyone was in lockdown and then I had decided, well, you know, 2019 for me was a lot of personal changes that year and decided that I wanted to do something different and wanted to try to, you know, step outside of my comfort zone. So, um, I had applied for the 20, 2020, um, World Pet Competition, however, that got canceled due to COVID, and so came back for 2021, and that's kind of how I, you know, started with that, and I was able to lean on a lot of friends who were either produced their own contests or were former title holders on kind of the tips and tricks of what to do, and then, um, made my trip uh, driving from the Washington, D.C. metro area to Memphis, Tennessee, um, with a pit stop in uh, Lexington, Kentucky, um, about halfway point, and uh, made it happen in Memphis. And, you know, with that, it has been uh, an amazing year. Um, travel started in November um, down to the uh, Virginia Bear contest which is uh pretty much it's it's a a meet and greet on a friday and then the contest is on a saturday um james and i were able or zach james and i went to that um then we had a bit of a break through the holidays um and then picked right back up and full steam ahead for the rest of the year started off with mid-atlantic leather here in the dc area um we went down for all, all three days and saw the um, Duke, who is the uh, Mr. Mid- Mid-Atlantic Leather winner, um, who went on to IML. Uh, we went to, and I apologize, it's been a lot in the past couple of months, so I'm gonna try to work That's through okay. my brain here. Uh, we went to North American Bear Weekend, where uh, Zach and I were judges, um, but James was also there. Uh, we went to Sash Bash, we went to TBRU, uh, Bears, Bikers, and Mayhem, uh, Tidal Wave, um, I feel like I'm missing one in there, uh, and then we're going to be coming up on, uh, Cincinnati Leather Weekend, and then, of course, we'll be ending our journey at World Bear, and, going to all those places and meeting all those people is has been great it um you know there are some fun aspects of it like i said there is you know there's a jock auction there are multiple jock auctions that i have never really done before and it was you know one of them was i uh reminded me of uh rocky horror i had a, a gold jock on that ended up going for a lot of money um but thankfully it was for um for the charity for uh for the north american bear weekend group um and i would say probably the, the the best part of it is just to be able to meet and chat with people about different um 
you know, different community issues. For example, uh, on a local bar uh, near Baltimore called Mixers, I was able to talk to somebody about how their partner um, is disabled and how they're um, regarding uh, the LGBTQ plus community and accessibility, mm -hmm. um, which is a big topic. And, you know, my, my, formal, my former muggle life I was a conference planning manager, and I one of the events that I did for a corporate client was the um, People with Disabilities Leadership Forum, which later rebranded as the Able and Allies Leadership Forum. Mm. And so that was a, a really personal conversation uh, because that is something that I did help to achieve um, with, uh, you know, modifications that, or I want to say modifications, accommodations that we had at our conference center um, for people and, you know, getting their feedback on, oh, this silver, the flatware that we have is too heavy. We need something a bit lighter because of the um, dexterity issues. Hmm. So um, just talking to people one-on-one -on -one and just hearing their story, um, you know, and if there's any support that I'm able to give or resources I can point them in the direction to, uh, that's that's why I'm here. That's that's why I don't want to sit around with a title that does nothing. Good point. I I, go ahead. Yeah. No, I'm saying I think you know on a personal level. I know you you've known me for many years now, many 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 years, and. Uh, you know, I, I never sit still. And I, with this, I have a platform and I want to use it. And so, however I can help and however I can share stories, however I can, um, even if it helps one person one time, it was worth it. No, it's, it's good that you have channeled your desire to assist other people in a way that you can do that through the title work. Um, I think that's the thing that I admire most about the the title holders I know of um, that I'm friends with or acquaintance with is that that's kind of a common thread between them is that they they want to do more in a way um, that is beyond themselves to help others um, in in that capacity. So speaking of that, um, I don't want to miss over this. So World Bear Weekend each year has charities that it raises funds for yes. um, in the case. And this year there are a couple of them. So the Rainbow Railroad um, happens to be one of them. And that one uh, folks may not necessarily be aware of, but basically um, in countries around the world, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and trans identifying individuals, um, based on where they live, could be fearing for their very livelihoods, um, including their safety. I know that uh, the beginning of the earlier this year, uh, with the ongoing Ukrainian situation, um, there was some concern about individuals and, you know, if they were going to be okay. Um, and so this particular charity actually helps um, those individuals with getting the accessibility or things that they need uh, to help them. So it could be the cost of travel documents, airfare, basic needs, um, so that they can get to a, a safer uh, country in that case. And one of the other charities is the One Pulse Foundation, since the event's going to be taking place in Orlando. Um, for those that may remember the Pulse nightclub uh, massacre in which we lost 49 of our brothers and sisters um, within the, the greater community, there uh, will also be a donation to them as a 501c3 towards um, their work on the legacy uh, of what happened in the memorial that's being planned and built. And if you go to the World Bear Weekend website, there's information listed there as well. And then I've included links in the, the document. Um, and then I think there's also another charity, AJ? There, there is. We are continuing our donation with the uh, St. Jude's Children's Hospital of Memphis as well. Um, I know many, many people... I know around my age, but I, re I remember the uh, St. Jude's Children's Hospital um, commercials very vividly, and I remember doing, um, you know, some fundraising at school for that as well. So that is something that I, I think is, it's a great organization. I was able to um, kind of meander around campus um, before, um, not not necessarily in conjunction with World Bear, but um, it's a great place. and. Um, all, all of these charities would be, you know, they're 
I'm proud to be able to help represent them um, moving forward and um, being able to support their causes. Nice. I remember when we uh, at Drench for years ago, this is quite a bit of time, we raised money for the um, Zem Zem Shriners Hospital mm -hmm. uh, location in Erie. And I think that might have been the largest single year donation towards a charity in the years that we had done that. I was honestly quite surprised by the number of people that came forward and said um, they had personal stories. Uh, family members, themselves, neighbors that they knew that benefited from the services. Uh, and so I think when a charity has, you know, that interaction in our lives, we're, you know, uh, understandably more interested or inclined and willing to advocate for, you know, the donation, the donation that comes to that as well. So I think that's really good. Um, as we're kind of moving towards rounding up, I, uh, Wanted to let you know. So I figured out who Ryan is in the chat. You know Ryan. Um, I know they Ryan. Raising, they were raising their hand because we were referencing family. Uh, so that's what that was about. Um, yes. So just, if, if I can jump in real quick, if, if I know if this is the correct Ryan who I think it is, uh, Ryan is uh, one of my other boyfriends and my pup. So um, yes. I have a uh, great title family and I have an awesome chosen family and relationships. Yeah. Uh, I have a curiosity. So um, in the spirit of not knowing what questions coming your way, I would like to know what is the one thing that surprised you the most since winning your title and your experience of being world Pat 2021. That, that stands out. Um, and keep in mind, you know, we did discuss earlier, mm -hmm. you know, language and other topic, that kind of stuff is going to be okay, like in theory. So right. oh, I, don't no. to, to, I don't want you to kind of filter and be like, oh, I can't talk about that. <laughs> no, um, I will say, you know, one of the, the big things, and I know Zach, is, Zach and James are probably going to laugh, um, the amount of packing you have to do to go to each of these events is absolutely insane and so not only do you have to bring clothes to wear you would you know if you are a winner you need to bring all of your title wear around with you and carry it forever around so um you know shout out to southwest um thank you for having two bags because that is uh, a lifesaver when you're trying to separate all the leather and the muggle wear out um that's probably one of the and i knew about that but just you know the actual weight of it all um is a bit concerning and then you're you know there you're, you're at the ticket stand and trying to rearrange things and of course something maybe like a bottle of lube or a dildo falls out and you're like well you know it happens <laughs> so because you had to be bothered because you need to catch your flight. <laughs> or going through TSA security and finding pup gear and trying to explain that to a TSA agent. Uh, or other toys. So, I'm, intrigued, I'm intrigued by the trying to explain pup gear to the TSA agent. Because... Um, yes. I mean, th this brings up lots of, of things, you know, I, I think we kind of forgot about this stuff or didn't think about it for the, sh the, the time we refer to as the shutdown. Um, Cause there wasn't really any travel happening, wasn't events, but now it's like, oh yeah. Like, I mean, adult toys, that's been going on for decades now. You right. know, people, people traveling with that. Um, I know in the drag community, you know, performers, artists, entertainers traveling with breastplates and padding mm -hmm. and, you know, wigs and different things sometimes uh, being confiscated, which is insane. Um, so, you know, because that's somehow a weapon. Anyways, uh, I could understand more importantly, you know, chains, uh, okay. impact play implements might be a concern. Right. Um, but, you know, the, the weight of things is, uh, is an interesting uh, point of it. Your, your uh, co-title holders are all agreeing in the, the live chat about <laughs> the gear. Um, aspect in, in that, which I can imagine that would be kind of, you know, a 
an important issue. I don't know if if you need to maybe go as far as raising a special online fund just to cover your extra travel expenses for those things. But um, well, and it's one of those things where you have to plan appropriately and just really have to plan what you're packing. And you know, if you have a scale at home, that would help to try to um, weigh your bag before you get to the airport, so there's no unexpected prizes uh, surprises. Mm. Um, the other thing I think I would find, um, you know, more the say surprising or shocking would be the amount of flexibility that you'll need to have as a title holder. Because, for example, I was it was I would say maybe a month or two after um, I had won the title, I went to a bar in Columbus. Um, there was a pet night, and one of my good friends was running the pet mosh, and there was a contest going on. And I'm hanging out there, and he approaches me. He's like, hey, we need another judge for this contest. You're a title holder. You can come do it. And so within, like, five minutes, because one of the judges didn't show up. So within five minutes of the contest starting, I was a judge for that. Mm. I'm very glad so, that you made that clarification because that was not the type of flexibility I was thinking about initially. <laughs> well, I do believe that Pup Zio is familiar with yoga, so yeah, I am. I, I'll say, I'll say right now from my personal training session last week, everything's a little tight. Everything, so. We'll leave that there. I, I need to work on my flexibility. Well, I was going to say, I don't know if some people would necessarily complain about that. I think they'd prefer that over other things, but, you know. I, I mean, I mean, I have a Facebook. I have an email. So, I got to <laughs> But do you have an OnlyFans? I mean, that might be what some of the audience wants to know. I do not. I mean, I have a Twitter, and you, you can get it for free. Oh. But we'll have to make sure we include that. <laughs> there are some people in OnlyFans who have at least free subscriptions. So. They do. That is true. Um, and that is true. And as of right now, Twitter is still allowing that type of content. So uh, maybe in the future, I would consider that. But for, for right now, I already am subscribed to a lot of different websites. And I'm trying to minimize my, my footprint online. That makes sense. Rest in peace, Tumblr. We miss those days. Rest in peace. <laughs> so as we get ready to wrap up here, was there anything else uh, that you wanted to cover or uh, recap as we're getting ready to, to wrap up here today? I think the, the biggest two things that I wanted to just kind of uh, recap on is the, the virtual mock interview event that we have um, coming up on Thursday, August 4th from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we'll, we'll be posting the Zoom link in the um, in the event page on Facebook about an hour beforehand, just to give everyone time who is hosting the event to get home from work and maybe grab something to eat and grab a nice beverage to um, accompany them on their uh, interview questions. Also, just a reminder regarding the if you are interested in running for World Bear. Uh, Ms. World Bear, World Cub, or maybe be my future title child as World Pet, um, make sure you submit your application on the World Bear Weekend website by August 15th. No exceptions. And finally, um, again, weekend price passing. Um, prices will go up at the end of the month, or at the, I'm sorry, at the beginning of August. So again, Basic uh, is 129 plus fees. Standard is 159 plus fees. VIP is 229 plus fees. Um, if you do want to volunteer, um, there is a special uh, price of $79 plus fees. Um, there also are day and night pass pricing as well. One thing I did not mention, and I don't think it's on the website, but we do have a, a, a pet mosh as well um, that is going to be have a social and a pet mosh. And there are specific tickets for that as well. Um, I believe it's for $10 for both of those events. And if you do want to upgrade um, 
after that, uh, for, this is more so for people local in the pet community there, um, there are options to upgrade as well. Um, so please um, go over to the website and don't forget there is a promo code uh, COL2022, uh, that's COL2022, and we'll give up to, give up to uh, $25 off standard or VIP passes. And that is good until the end of August at 11.59 p.m. So if you really want to save and you've been kind of like waiting for some reason and you haven't already bought your ticket, if you do it between now and the end of July before August 1st with the price increase, that's the best time in terms of like doing that and using the discount code that Adam has lovingly given for this uh, podcast episode so you can actually save more money. So, yeah. yes. Absolutely, and and you and you have a little bit of time if you need to request the time off for work or need to manage any schedules. You do have until the end of August to make that decision, um, and then you can also, if you are attending, download the Yap app. Um, the group code is World Bear, all one word, and that'll give you access to the schedule. The um, well, the, the main schedule you can customize your own schedule. Any sort of maps. Um, and also be able to interact and network with the addition, the other attendees um, who are attending World Bear. Nice. Uh, for those that uh, we didn't even talk about this really uh, necessarily, so uh, a lot of bear runs sometimes have a theme. This year's theme is heroes and villains. Um, yes. If you happen to be watching the video and seeing uh, my virtual backdrop, this is a representation um, of that. Uh, so basically it's a concept of like heroes and villains from comic books, fantasy, sci-fi. I mean, when you look at the actual schedule for the weekend, you will see, um, within that there's a, a lot of theming that goes with that. Um, but it is optional. It is not a requirement. You don't have to go buy costumes and, uh, regalia of that sort. But of course I imagine a great many people will because, uh, we are that way as the gays. We love a theme and a party. Cosplay there is a theme. Cosplay is encouraged, not required. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you join the World Bear Weekend uh, group on Facebook, Adam has posted, uh, I believe he's, t- I'm not sure what the time frame is, but Adam is looking at ordering um, superhero themed, I think, swimsuits, or I'll say some sort of wet wear um, that you could be used in the pool area. So um, check that out. I believe that's through his store, uh, Torso Menswear, as well. But um, he has nice. posted something in the World Bear Weekend chat, and I do believe you need to pre-order those as right. well. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just looking over the schedule of things. There's a whole series of stuff. There's like superhero movie night. Um, there's several DJ dances, a villains and vixens show. That's on Thursday night. Um, of course, we've got the contest that's going on. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the Fortress of Solitude, not quite sure what that is, um, that's happening each <laughs> late afternoon. Um, hmm, hmm, makes you wonder what that is. What um, could that be? Yeah, so there's going to be bingo. Uh, there's, you know, some other options. The Hellfire Gala, which is a dance uh, with DJ Alex Mm -hmm. Uh, On Friday night, a Socks and Jocks dance party, Gamers Lounge, Den of Mischief. Okay, now see that, that one I think I can probably guess what that is. I I think you can guess what that is, yes. (laughs) But there's also... It is is a place to to network with your fellow um, World Bear attendees. Make connections. Make connections. Business deals. Deposits. Right. Yes. Deposits. Withdrawals. Definitely. Deposits and withdrawals of DNA, most likely. Um, and before I forget, uh, because we are bears, uh, some of the packages, depending on what you purchase, may include meals. So there are some lunch items, dinner, midnight munchies, uh, other items. And of course, it is in the great host city of Orlando, where there is a ton of options in terms of cuisine. Drew and I have already been making plans. Um, he's like on top of it and he's like, what about this place? What about this place? I already have some personal preferences. So yeah, there's, there's great many things, um, that you can do. And before I forget, if you've never been, uh, I am most likely going to go, Drew might join me, um, cause I've never been to world bear weekend. They have newbie orientation sessions that are taking place as a part of the schedule. So, um, we've done it actually with drenched fur. If, if you've ever been to a, a bear run type event, 
then this may not necessarily be new information for you. Um, but it could still be helpful because it'll give you the lay of the land about like who, what, where, when in particular to this event um, compared to other events. So it can be good for a person who's never been to an event ever. It can also be good if you've been to events before, but let's be honest, it's been a couple of years, you know, so Maybe rusty. And wow. yeah, everyone could probably use a refresher. <laughs> when it comes to that stuff. So yeah, there's there's a ton of things going on. In fact, so much stuff you cannot do at all. Because there are things that overlap. It's quite impossible to get to everything from what I can tell on this men- on this uh schedule. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um and Zach says singlets. I think he means that singlets are a thing that's preferred or an option that could be worn. <laughs> <laughs> singlets are an option, yes. And th- I want to say this um, this schedule is thick. T H I C C. Maybe more C's too. Oh, plenty, plenty. I'm I'm plenty. imagining that the attendance will represent that as well. Very much so. Uh, so uh, as we move on to wrap up if people have any questions or are interested uh, by all means there's plenty of ways to get in touch with us here um, the big thing is a lot of the stuff that we went over in this episode that we've been referencing we have in an online document that we're going to uh, well I say we but I mean Jeff as the producer here I basically <laughs> copy and paste and, it into into the blog yeah. post so just go to so, it's fine. you'll find you'll find tons of stuff in there um but there are other ways to get a hold of us. Jeff, what are those options? Well, in addition to going to CubsOutLot.com, you can also come to the blog there as well as click the link. Links that we have. Uh, as well as, say, hey, if you forgot what that uh, discount code was, COL 2022, I don't know how you can forget it. But hey, if you do, it'll be right there. Um, you can also shoot us an email. It comes out loud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at... Uh, 361 COL Talk. That's 361 265 8255. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, at Cubzella in the appropriate place of the URL, or chat us up in our Telegram chat at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash COL. If you would like to know when we're planning on recording these shows, you can subscribe to our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash COL. You can also get various accoutrements such as a consensus my four play pride shirt in various different styles as well as hats like Gary's wearing and various other kutramon that's at zazzle.com slash cups out loud uh, some of those designs were di- designed by smashy you can find more of his work at epublic epublic.com slash user slash smashy the bear or you can also join us on Patreon and become a patron at patreon.com slash cubsoutloud. If you'd like to just send us a donation to help us improve this podcast, you can do that at paypal.me slash cubsoutloud. You can subscribe, rate us, review us uh, to share uh, your love for the show all over the world. Uh, over on uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, and Spotify. You can find me anywhere on the internet as box set box, puppy box. A box, something or other. Or Windjum, W-Y-N-D-G-E-M on Twitch. Uh, we were stream Bears and Dragons, which probably is going to be on a slider for hiatus until I get my air conditioning fixed. Okay. If you want to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. That's G-A-R-B-E-A-R-7-3. When it comes to Twitter, I have several accounts. The one you might be more interested in is the one that says GareBear73XXX. And that's because that's the naughty one. Um, Not to break anybody's hearts, but there's not really much of me in there. It's more the things that I like that I repost and share. I will admit it is 2022. I'm a little fired up on some political things. So you might see some of that content within that feed as well. AJ, if people want to get in touch with you online, can they and how would they do so? They can. I have a couple different ways. Uh, first way is uh, mentioning that naughty Twitter, uh, Pup Z uh, O, that's Z E O X X X on Twitter. Uh, I'm either Pup Z O, which is my business page on Facebook, or my personal page is AJ.Sementelli, my last name. Um, you can also find me on Telegram at uh, PupZio as well, and feel free to um, give me a shout, and we can chat. Nice. And with that, 
Mm-hmm. Take it out, everybody. Have a good one, y'all.